Hi humans. Yesterday I put up a video and somebody put up a question under the video that said, would I discuss form is emptiness, emptiness is form from the Heart Sutra? That's a question I like. So let's talk about that, okay? The Heart Sutra is probably the single most important sutra in all of the Zen version of Buddhism. It's extremely short. It's so short, in fact, that I'm going to read it to you right now, the whole damn thing. Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, when deeply practicing Prajnaparamita, clearly saw that all five aggregates are empty and thus relieved all suffering. Shariputra, form does not differ from emptiness, emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness, emptiness itself form. Sensations, perceptions, formations, and consciousness are also like this. Shariputra, all dharmas are marked by emptiness. They neither arise nor cease, are neither defiled nor pure, neither increase nor decrease. Therefore, Given emptiness, there is no form, no sensation, no perception, no formation, no consciousness. No eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. No sight, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind. No realm of sight, no realm of mind consciousness. There is neither ignorance nor extinction of ignorance. Neither old age and death nor extinction of old age and death. No suffering, no cause, no cessation, no path. No knowledge and no attainment. With nothing to attain, a bodhisattva relies on prajnaparamita and thus the mind is without hindrance. Without hindrance, there is no fear. Far beyond all inverted views, one realizes nirvana. All Buddhas of past, present, and future rely on Prajnaparamita and thereby attain unsurpassed, complete, perfect enlightenment. Therefore, know the Prajnaparamita mantra as the great miraculous mantra, the great bright mantra, the supreme mantra, the incomparable mantra, which removes all suffering and is true, not false. Therefore, we proclaim the Prajnaparamita mantra, the mantra that says, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam, Gate, Bodhi, Svaha, the end. I first heard that sutra when I was about 18 or 19 years old, taking a class taught by a guy named Tim McCarthy at Kent State University called Zen Buddhism, and it just blew my mind. Uh, I didn't know what it meant or anything. The context, nothing. But when I heard that line, form is emptiness, emptiness is form, I was like, yeah, that's it. That's the thing I've been looking for. And I've been working on it for the rest of my life. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form is the standard translation of the line. There are a few outliers. One of them is my teacher, Gudo Nishijima. His version of the Heart Sutra appears in Book One of Shobo Genzo, his translation, and the line in question goes, matter is just the immaterial and the immaterial is just matter. Another more recent outlier is Kazuaki Tanahashi in his book The Heart Sutra. He provides his own new translation of the Heart Sutra. His version of the line goes like this. Form is boundlessness, boundlessness is form. The sutra was probably originally written in Chinese. This is a slightly controversial theory, but it's gaining more and more acceptance these days, and I tend to think it's probably true based on my limited knowledge. The idea is that although there is a Sanskrit version of the Heart Sutra, that the Sanskrit version was produced after the Chinese version as a way of kind of justifying the existence of the Chinese version. They're going, hey, it was a translation of this, when in fact it probably went the other way. We may never know the full answer to this, but it, it seems an interesting theory and one that I'm inclined to believe. So let's look at the Chinese characters. The main two we are dealing with are Shiki and Ku. This is the one we typically translate as form, or Nishijima translates as the material, and Kazuaki Tanahashi just translates it as form. The other is Ku, emptiness boundlessness in the Tanahashi translation or the immaterial in the Nishijima translation, but usually emptiness. So form, emptiness. The weird thing to me is this character that is often translated as form, I know it as iro, which means color. And I was kind of wondering about that, so before I did this video, I did a little research. It took a while to find the answer, because everybody seems to kind of take it for granted, but finally I found in Kazuaki Tanahashi's book this line. Rupa is the word that's used in Sanskrit, and it says, the Chinese translation for form is se, which is iro, which is the kanji I just showed you. Se commonly means color, 
hue, beauty, and lust. Same meanings it has in Japanese. For non-Buddhists who read Chinese, it may be hard to imagine that the word color can also mean form, as there are other ideographs that mean form. That's what I always wonder. There's plenty of things you could use to mean form other than that one. Se, however, is a technical term in Chinese Buddhism and is transliterated and used in other East Asian countries rather than translated. So basically, the short answer is that's just the way people do things. So, what does it mean to say form is emptiness, emptiness is form? That's, to me, a really interesting question. Now, I have written about this a few dozen times over the years, and occasionally somebody will write back in a comment or an email to me saying, you're wrong, that's not what it really means. Ah. <laughs> oh, well, maybe they're being nicer than that, but, you know, I get, I get these answers saying uh, that I'm wrong. And maybe I am, but I don't think there's an objective right or wrong. There's a kind of a feeling one gets from this. And what I'm saying is kind of borne out by that problem of the words I just showed you in Chinese. We have a lot of words to mean a lot of things. If you go back in time, languages tend to have fewer words and each word has to stand in for more stuff. Uh, we tend to create more and more technical terms and more and more divisions and languages get bigger over time. People are just trying to find whatever word they can to represent something that is not word bound. The fact that this means color typically and the fact that this uh, this emptiness is often found in words like air and by itself it can even mean sky. It's a wide ranging concept, both of them, form and emptiness. Before I tell you my take on the matter, I'd like to read to you a couple of things from Red Pine's book about the Heart Sutra, translation and commentary. Here he says, in considering this relationship, Avalokiteshvara, the bodhisattva who begins the sutra, realizes that it only works because form and emptiness are inseparable. Thus, he advances their equation by eliminating the possibility that form and emptiness overlap but do not completely coincide. Not only are they identical, they are not different. So this idea of non-difference is something that crops up a lot in Indian philosophy. We, we sort of say same and different, but Indian philosophy often uses this term non-different as a something meaning slightly not exactly the same thing as saying same to say not different. He quotes some ancient Chinese philosophers about their opinions. Uh, Cheng Ko says, as for seeing that the five skandhas, those are the five elements a human being is made up of, form, feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, maybe we'll do a video about that later. As for seeing that the five skandhas are empty, this is not an emptiness separate from the skandhas, but the emptiness of the skandhas. The emptiness realized by Avalokiteshvara is not the one-sided emptiness of the lesser path, and not an emptiness of senselessness or an emptiness of annihilation. It is simply the emptiness that is form. Since form can be emptiness, emptiness can be form. Thus it says, form is not separate from emptiness, and emptiness is not separate from form. Hui Chung says, people misapprehend their own mind and see form as something outside their mind. They don't know that form exists because of their mind, and where could form come from if not from their mind? Thus it says, form is not separate from emptiness. People turn their backs on their mind and grab hold of dharmas and think emptiness is something outside their mind. They don't know that emptiness arises from their mind. Qi Shen says, Inside emptiness there is no form. Outside form there is no emptiness. Emptiness and form are one suchness. They are not separate. Tai Ching says, The statement form is not separate from emptiness destroys the ordinary person's view of permanence. This is because ordinary people think that only their material body is real and don't realize their body is an empty fiction and subject to the ceaseless changes of birth, old age, illness, and death. But even when it reaches old age and death and finally becomes impermanent and turns out to be empty, this is still the emptiness of origination and cessation and not yet the final truth. This means that the physical body is basically not different from true emptiness. That's a lot of talk. Here's my version of the thing, for whatever it's worth. There are two sides of any experience that I 
can have. I'm having those two sides right now as I make this video. So right now as I make this video there's the form side, there is my material body, oh, there is the laptop which you can't see uh, that I'm talking into, there's the microphone that I'm using to talk to you with. There's all this matter stuff and it all seems to be external to me. Meanwhile, there is this other side of experience going on which is internal. I have the physical sensation of my larynx moving and my lips touching and my tongue doing things and I have the, the uh, sensation of my mind thinking up what the hell I'm gonna say next and I'm having the experiential experience of light shining into my eyes and making shapes of the gem video behind me on that side and the valley of the dinosaurs video behind me on that side and so on and so forth. So there's there's this internal experience that I'm having too. To me, the sutra is saying that this internal experience, this kind of empty experience, which is very nebulous and difficult to pin down, we don't know exactly what it is, and the external part of the experience, which is the laptop that you can't see and the microphone that you also can't see and the videos on the back and the books and my physical body and all that. It's saying that they are ultimately the same, that there is no difference between these two. The problem sometimes comes up where people get this idea that what we're saying is kind of a solipsistic idea or a kind of Deepak Chopra-ish idea wherein mind is the ultimate thing and outside external stuff is negligible. I don't believe this is the Buddhist view at all. The Buddhist view is that the external stuff is just as important as the internal stuff and it's all related. We only know the external world through our mind, so everything that we think that we see is actually something that's being constructed in our brains, including our brains themselves. That's a real mind blower. So all of it is is a, a construct that we're creating and it works and, and science works because this construct is consistent or mostly consistent. It doesn't, it doesn't sort of change on a whim. You can't just decide that uh, my hair is green, you know. If I wanted my hair to be green, I'd have to go to the salon and get it bleached and put some dye in and everything else. I can't just go ding like or like Samantha on Bewitched and make it green. So there is a there is a consistency to the external world and this consistency is related to the idea of cause and effect. So if you're going to make a change in the external world or in the internal world for that matter, there has to be a cause and effect chain that you can work back from and make sense out of it. So everything kind of makes sense and this is why science works. But the sutra is saying, yeah, that's true, but it's doing a kind of E equals MC squared thing where it says matter is energy and energy is matter, right? So we're saying form is emptiness and emptiness is form. In fact, there's a, I think, a strong correlation between the E equals MC squared equation and the idea of form is emptiness, emptiness is form, which may be why Nishijima Roshi decided on the immaterial is matter and matter is the immaterial. I don't know, you'd have to ask him, but you can't because he's dead. So that's my very short take on a very deep subject. If you'd like to discuss it more, you can leave a comment below. I try to answer all the comments. If you'd like to support me keeping on doing this kind of stuff, send a donation. There are places you can send donations to. Uh, we're going to work on Patreon and get it happening. I keep telling myself I'm going to do that and I'm going to do it. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye.